Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview and some benchmarks on this new video card from EVGA. This is the EVGA GeForce GTX 650 1GB Superclocked Edition. Let's take a closer look at the retail box. EVGA has a 650 in a few different flavors. So uh, you got the memory frame buffer for one thing, and this is 1 gigabyte GDDR5. It's running at 1,250 megahertz on a 128-bit bus. It is PCI Express Gen 3 compliant. It's uh, backwards compatible with PCI Express Gen 2, so don't worry if you're using an older motherboard. You get uh, DirectX 11 physics, 3D vision, uh, a lot of the good stuff that came by way of the Kepler architecture when the 600 series was released. And this is the superclocked edition, which means it's got a factory overclock. Uh, the reference clock for the 650 is 1059 megahertz uh, for the uh, GPU core clock. This one's running at 1202. There's some, uh, wait, I was going to go to this side. Some uh, specs right here, just FYI, you want a 400 watt or greater power supply with a minimum of 20 amps on the plus 12 volt rail. Uh, PCI Express compatibility, of course, and then Microsoft Windows 7 Vista or XP compatible. Flipping around here to the back, you got some more gritty details. I'm not going to go over all of these, uh, but again, Kepler Adaptive VSync is one of the really cool things that's available along with that, as well as all these other technologies. Here's a look at the accessories from the box. You have the graphics card user guide, which will walk you through a basic installation as well as some features. You can also take a look at our How to Build a Computer series on our new YouTube channel if you'd like some more information on installing a video card. You get a display driver disc. Chances are there are updated drivers available by the time you get this disc, so download those from the NVIDIA website. Also some information here letting you know that video cards get hot. Don't touch them, you can burn yourself. Also PCI Express 3.0 compatibility, of course, although again, that's not necessary. Uh, GeForce GTX 600 series quick start guide, and this is uh, again, sort of general to the 600 series of video cards, but some more information on installation and all that good stuff. You also get an EVGA case badge right there, if you're into case badges. You get a DVI to VGA adapter, so if you're using an older monitor, you get the DVI on one side here, you can plug into the card, uh, adapts over to a VGA connector, 15 pin V sub for older monitors. You also have a power adapter here, you do need a six pin PCI Express power connector coming from your power supply, but if you don't have that available and you do have a power supply that has enough wattage, you can take two of these Molex plugs, convert that over, and then plug that in to power your card. And here's the video card itself, and everyone who has seen this card so far just keeps saying how cute it is, which maybe isn't what EVGA was going for, but uh, who cares? It's cute. They're very small. It measures just under six inches, actually about five and three quarters inches long, so uh, you have should have plenty of spare room in any case. I mean, this won't even extend to the end of like a micro ATX motherboard. So uh, very good for a small form factor build, uh, but it still remains a two slot cooling card. So bear that in mind. And uh, I've left all the plastic on. Actually, I put the plastic back on because I've already benchmarked this card, but I just wanted to show you guys. Uh, EVJ has definitely gone to great lengths to protect the card on its way to you to make sure that it arrives in pristine condition. But also just to point out that apart from this outer layer of plastic here, you got one on the fan, so peel that off. Don't push down on the fan, by the way. And then, uh, yes, guarantee you might have missed these. There's one up here, across that, and there's another one right here. Really easy to miss, but uh, peel these off. It's probably not going to hurt if you leave them on, but it's not going to help either. So there you go. Now your card is all nice and pretty, ready to go. So uh, it's sort of a partially enclosed shroud cooling design here. It's black and gray. Uh, if you've got the card installed, chances are you'll be looking at that side of it. So you got a bit of an EVGA logo going on there. Down on this side, you can see the GTX 650, more EVGA logo. You have a single fan right here. There's a radial sty style uh, aluminum heat fin array or heat sink array of fins down there. Uh, they've given it sort of a black powder coat finish, so it keeps with the look of the card, as you can see. Heat sink around the end right there. And it keeps the card nice and cool. I've noticed with the 600 series, and especially getting down to the 660 and 650, uh, which aren't as fast of cards, but uh, they do run really, really cool. So if temperature is a concern, definitely uh, you shouldn't have any issues there. Taking a look at the video outs down here at the bottom, you have two dual link DVI outs. Uh, so this one here on the right side uh, has analog connectors. So if you're going to use that DVI to VGA adapter, use it on this plug. This one here is digital only, so digital DVI. You also get a mini HDMI out. You will need an adapter for that to connect it to a standard HDMI plug, uh, but nice to have all digital connectivity right here. And you can push up to three monitors from this single video card. 
which is very nice, especially in uh, more of an entry level 600 series card like this one from EVGA. Now you do have a supplemental PCI Express power connector, so apart from the 75 watts that it gets from the PCI Express connector right there, uh, it needs a little bit more juice, so plug that in, route that over to your power supply. You can use the adapter if necessary. Down here at the bottom you have your PCI Express Gen 3 connector. Uh, it's physically the same as PCI Express Gen 2, so don't worry if you're running Gen 2, especially with this card, you're not going to have any issues as far as bandwidth goes. Uh, at the bottom you can see the PCB is a nice uh, black, sort of a semi-gloss black finish. Uh, so yeah, just sort of keeps in line with the general look and feel of the card overall. Uh, which I think they've done a great job on, and um, it's it's so cute. Okay, I, I'm, that's the last time I'm going to call this card cute, I promise. Next, we're going to get into some benchmarks, because I did have a chance to run this card through some benchmarks. For our test bed, we're running a uh, Core i5 3570K processor, so it's an Ivy Bridge, fully PCI Express Gen 3 compatible. Uh, we're on a Z77 platform, and uh, we've got 8 gigs of 2666 speed memory from G-Skill. So here's a look at our benchmarks. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Those were our benchmarks, and I did want to point out that my benchmark suite right now, I don't really have a set that I run for uh, the entry-level video cards, so these that you saw were running at 1920 by 1080 um, which is fairly high resolution for a card of this nature. So please bear that in mind when you're looking at the numbers. Uh, also, the temperatures that you saw, the ambient temperature was 72 degrees Fahrenheit, and I know all those other temperatures were in Celsius, but there you have it. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the EVGA GTX 650. Uh, this is the one gigabyte super clocked edition. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video or want to see more videos on the 600 series as well as lots of other tech videos, you can check out our Newegg YouTube channel. Of course, don't forget to subscribe, and thank you all very much for watching Newegg TV.